Because it's over. I figured he'd make a beeline over Look, here. Well, imagine opening your mailbox and seeing dried oatmeal lying there. Henry, you win. All the printers and tell to make it up in whatever they're Number 64. Is. Great, Marina. you're not going to be sorry, okay. Jill. Hi, right. Bobby. How you doing? Oh, boy. What's happening? Not good. Mm -hmm. Did Frank tell you the game plan? That you were going to stay out of the beach house until you got some answers. Mm-hmm. Well, we were that close. We were right down the home stretch. Come into my office. All right, the whole plan was to get her into such a mental state she'd be just like putty in our hands. No control, loss of everything. The old third degree, no rough stuff. Frank and I took turns wearing her down. We kept her going for two days, two nights, no food, no sleep. I mean, we slept. We ate like kings, but not Charlotte. We wouldn't let her close her eyes, and we wouldn't let her have a crust of bread. Just water. You know something that witch is made out of iron? Expected her lips to rust. She didn't tell you anything? No, see, that's the point. Finally, this afternoon, she starts to crumble. She's right on the ledge. She's ready to go over. She can't think straight. She can't talk straight. She's totally disoriented. And suddenly, she starts mumbling something about her father and some, some business about uh, legs or something like that. Well, the crux of the whole thing is her father's involved in this, and his name is Neil. Neil? Neil who? Neil who, exactly? She's ready to give the whole answer. Then the door comes open. Who walks in? Siobhan. Siobhan? Yeah. What was she doing out there? Well, she came out to commune with nature. Oh, boy. You know, recharge your batteries. Ain't that great? But, Bobby, how? Faith gave her the key. No, wait. I saw Faith just yesterday. She said nothing to me. Oh, boy. Why didn't I just warn her about this? Well, how would you know? Faith hasn't taken a day off in weeks. You know what Roger's plans were? I mean, today of all days, why did Siobhan come out there? Well, anyway, she walks in, Charlotte recognizes her, she knows she's a cop, Bobby knows her badge number, she says, I need protection, and guess what? Siobhan Ryan gets into a phone booth, and out comes Officer Novak. I'm sure she felt terrible. Well, how the hell do you think I felt? How do you think Frank felt? I mean, I love Siobhan, but when I came down there and saw her sitting there, I wanted to kick her. And I'm sure that Frank did, too. Yeah, you know it. I mean, Jill, all we needed was 15 minutes, just 15. Fifteen minutes. No, Mrs. Mrs. Novak says this is kidnapping. This is against the law. You gotta let her go. And you did. Yeah, I, I took her back to the hotel and left her there. Frank stayed out there with Siobhan. She wanted to have some words with together. I think he's gonna ride back in with her. I'd probably end up killing each other. Oh, I doubt that. Where's Charlotte? I dropped her off at the hotel. Figured Frank could be here too. Bobby, Frank hasn't even called me. Well, then where in the devil is he at? One grandma who can still outpace a two-year-old. A uh, child, that is, not horse. <laughs> right. So where's Ellie? Uh, she's in the kitchen. Helga's giving her dinner. Hey, newly minted. Uh, Jillian is not wasting any time. You bet. I picked that up at her campaign headquarters this morning. Well, oh, she's prettier than Frank. I'll give her that. <laughs> a lot smarter, too. Ah, so you don't think there's going to be any Charles Greer hanging around in the wings ready to pounce? Yeah, well, I'll tell you this. If there is, she'll turn him into a Coleridge for Congress volunteer. Now, she, she knows a lot more about, about the human condition than Frank ever will. Her only connection, uh, unfortunately, happens to be Frank. But maybe this, uh, this whole wife scam business will open her eyes. So you, uh, you buy Charlotte Greer's story, eh? Oh, come on. I mean, it's, it's too bizarre not to be true. Don't you think? Yes, Seneca, you know, I really don't know what I think. 
I don't really care. As far as I'm concerned, it's all just too delicious. I mean, I can have my cake and eat it, too, and raise circulation at the same time. Frank Ryan is in wonderful trouble, and all I've got to do is put him on the front page and sell my newspapers. Excuse me. Hello. Ray? Roger, how are you, though? Uh, incomparable, but this isn't a social call. Ah, oh, what a pity. I'm feeling so sociable. D L Ray, listen, I was just uh, settling into a nice quiet evening with my TV, Channel 8, and they promoted uh, Jack Finelli interview uh, about you. What? Yeah, starting now, Channel 8, turn it on fast. Thanks, Roger. I'll get back to you. What's the matter? For that situation with you, I'd like to introduce Mr. Gaston Scarlett. Mr. Scariger, you were a patient at the Riverside Free Clinic. Yes, since the beginning. I'm a patient. Me, my wife, my children. What has been your experience at the Free Clinic? <laughs> uh, the clinic is like a house. You come in, sit down, sit down. Be comfortable. Feel like a person. Then maybe you see Dr. Ryan or Dr. Coleridge, two Dr. Coleridge. Hello, how are you? How do you feel? How's your children? How's your job? They know you. They care. Not only they take care of you, they care about you. It's no good, it closes. Thank you, Mr. Escarica. They have time. They care. There is a difference. But now the free clinic, which dispenses this special care, is in danger of closing its doors. Not because of federal cutbacks or city or state belt tightening, which has caused understaffing and overcrowding at municipal hospitals such as Riverside. No, the free clinic is in danger of closing its doors because its board member and principal financial source, Mrs. Ray Woodard. Don't widow go too far, Jack. Radio, TV, and publishing magnate William Woodard, an heiress to his $100 million plus estate, has without warning withdrawn her pledge of funds to keep the clinic alive. The question is why. You Since know Alexa, damn Dr. well Catherine, why. The founder of the clinic has fallen into disfavor with Mrs. Woodard. You bet he Politician has. Frank Ryan fell into similar disfavor some years back. It is alleged that that cost him his Senate seat. Oh. But this time, personal peace. Cheap may shot, cost Jack, I paid for that. A very special kind of medical service. Mrs. Woodard signed a contract agreeing to support the clinic. It is the my money. I do with it what I want to do. My concern is the unwritten social contract. Oh, go on. Doctors, Pull out all the stops. The Come nurses, on. the medical aides, and with the children, and the parents, and the elderly. Why, Mrs. Woodard? Why? This is Jack Finelli. Thank you. Good I night. will have your head. When did this happen? Want to play dirty, Jack? All right. You and I are now going to play dirty. Yes, connect me with Tom Jones, please. His private line, this is Ray Woodard calling. Is he in? Tom, it's Ray. I just saw the finale segment. Oh, you bet I do. You come over to my apartment in a half an hour, and we will talk. <laughs> Is it true? Did you pull your money out of the clinic? Hmm? Zach, will you do me a favor, please? Collect Ardley and Helga and give them my blessing and get out. What are you going to do? My damnedest. And I've got exactly 30 minutes to do it. Mm -hmm. 